Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News Masters. Toko has officially begun a shockingly impressive victory for Evil Geniuses in the group stages we shall dive into in the coming minutes here. Also results in the challenger side setting things up nicely for Ascension. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. So much to get into. First of all, this and both of them was pretty good. Masters Toko underway. Many of these teams, they will be waiting around a few days because they will only be playing come the playoffs, right, for a lot of the top teams. Teams, but um, and that is the case with Fnatic and Liquid and others. Some teams are planning to be there soon, aren't necessarily there yet. Something is one of those players from Paper X we'll discuss in a second who's trying to get there, but um, is far from guaranteed as it stands. Before we get to Masters, though, we've got to discuss what's going on in the challenger side. Benji Fishy, of course, playing for Enterprise Esports. They won a 3-2 series against Diamond yesterday to make it to the grand finals of their specific VCT EMEA challenger side. They play Ascend today in the Grand Finals, and I believe the winner of that series will make it through to the Ascension EMEA tournament. So, pretty good stuff from Enterprise Esports and Benji Fisher. I thought it was nice to see how this is going. I always like to keep up with his progress over every, you know, month or so. But they will play a pretty solid Ascends team in the finals there, and then that team will qualify through to the Ascension tournament, where one of those teams will then go on to qualify for the league, just like is happening in the Americas, or at least in the North American side, with the guy and M80. They played each other last night. I thought it was really nice to see this um, shorty pistol round to honor Twiston's legacy. And there's been lots of talk about Twiston, especially at Masters Choco, which has been great to see as well. And uh, we actually had this yesterday, right? So uh, the shorty face-offs before the game started, <laughs> like, uh, you know, in, um, in Remembrance of Twiston. So I thought it was really nice to see. Uh, I th I'm sure we'll see more of this as well at Choco over the coming days and weeks as well with the shorty in hand. So yeah, just entertaining stuff. And um, yeah, it was just great to see how this one turned out, to be honest. So anyway, the series did get underway and M80 got the job done. Very impressed by this team, as, of course, always is the case. They are kind of smurfing in this league, it seems to me. They beat the guard 3-1. The guard won map 1, 13-11. And this was a very competitive series, right? The guards were definitely no slouches here. But game 2 was an absolute demolition job. 13-1 on Lotus. And that at that point, they had the momentum, right? I don't know what it is about M80. Like, the second map of every series they've played lately has been insane. They just body everyone. 13-2, 13-5, 13-1, 13-3. Doesn't matter. They're just going to take you down in game 2. Their Lotus, of course, is incredibly good as well. Haven, though, was 13 13 11 and then split was 13 11 as well so it was very competitive on all of those uh, fracture haven splits game two was just ridiculous but aside from that m80 were definitely challenged i will feel like if i'm m80 do i want to give that much away at this point because this series doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things m80 win this one they solidify themselves as the favorites to get through the ascension tournament in the americas and make it up to the primary league and i would still say they will do that but if you're the guy or if you're M80, do you want to give that much away here? Because this could well be a rematch very shortly at the end of this month. I think it's the start of July, pretty much, after Masters concludes, where they will go to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and play between those six teams. The Union is the other kind of, like, big favourite from the Brazilian side. But one of those teams is going to make it through, and it may well be a guard M80 rematch at some point, where, you know, anything you give away here might well be critical. It's a long time away, though, but I imagine they don't want to, you know, give as much away as that. You know, they want to keep some things in reserve I think here M80 and the guard both because this series doesn't matter that much but for seeding but M80 still confirmed like you want to win this one just because they now know going into the event that they are the team to beat they are the favorites and this is how the bracket worked out so after all the drama after all the controversy after all the questions it was indeed the case that M80 versus the guards were the best two teams and they have made it through now exactly what they intended to do since the start of the season also I thought this is pretty absurd top 10 players rated players from this season of NA Challenge you have to go to fifth to find anyone that isn't on M80. Like, just how insane is this? Nismo, Kuala Noob, Xander, EU, John QT, all of them rated 1.14 and above, and all in the top seven. Like, it's just absolutely absurd, to be honest. So, yeah, Trent is here, Verno is here, Narrate as well for Mad Lions, now a free agent, of course, Nature, Jonah P. But, um, yeah, M80 just smurfing in this league, to be honest, and uh, probably won't be too long, at least in my opinion, until they're out of this league, and they don't have to come back anymore after they win Ascension and get promoted. 
which is that, well, the pressure is now on them to achieve that, right? Because they are clearly the favourites going into it. Let's talk Masters then. So it began earlier this morning, my time. It's um, obviously a tricky time for many from the Americas, but for those in Japan and in Australia and stuff, this is pretty ideal. So it's good to see they finally get a decent event at a decent time. But as Bustio says, anyone at Masters Tokyo, there's ping pong table downstairs. I'll smoke all of you, DM to get your one. And something says coming. So I don't know whether he actually is coming or whether he's just people like trying to give people hope because I don't think there's been any other statement following this up from something or from the organization themselves, at least as of recording. If I go to his Twitter now and just check the most recent tweets, there's, um, you know, the most recent tweet is pretty much those ones we just looked at. So is something actually on his way? Is he just saying, oh, you know, I wish I was coming? We don't really know. But Demon 1 made it out there last minute and Paper X still don't have to play for another five or six days because they made it straight through to the playoff stages. So they still have time to get something there. But if he isn't there, I think their chances are going to be very low indeed. But um, look, Evil Geniuses, they did get Demon 1 out just about. The guys on Foot Esports actually gave their analysis on the rankings of the teams, which are, um, to me, highly questionable, let's say. But still, they put EG S tier, I'm guessing, just because they play them in the match that they were going to play. And we'll see what happened in that match in a second, because you don't want to, like, jinx them or whatever. But it turns out it didn't matter anyway, because EG won this very impressively. 13-5 on on the split, and then game two, Bustio just absolutely took over. He was, um, you know, we haven't seen that much crazy stuff from Bustio like this, but he gets an ace. I mean, he was absolutely loving life. He was frying everyone, and I'll just share a clip here from Tarek's point of view, where he got the first ace. He was just slaying out everyone. He was treading himself. They eventually go overtime here on the Lotus before clutching up and winning it anyway. And that's what it seems like. That's where they're headed. Bustio keeping Big him back for now. Big stun back. Trying to swing out as well. You can see it. Nice shot. Bustio may hold the line by himself. There's the spam that we were just referring to. Oh, Bustio! In the face of the First base! Bustio swings out First base! Maj in an impossible oh! situation. And the very... Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's actually good. They've got him trapped. There's nowhere for them to go. Bustio playing such Notice a dangerous that, uh, position. Wow. Bustio's turning. Oh, oh my god. Finds it. Bro. Not able to convert oh my god, much he more himself the as well. he brings So what a result from Evil Genius is right. Philly Sports were looking pretty good coming into this one from the EMEA side. They had taken down Na'Vi in that impressive series. And technically, they were the third best team from EMEA behind Liquid and behind, well, Fnatic and then Liquid behind that. Not sure for Esports actually are better than Na'Vi in a proper, you know, land setting, big tournament environment. I would still favor Na'Vi to beat them. But still, Philly Sports probably the fourth best team in EMEA. And for EG to come through and beat them relatively comfortably right and especially because Demon 1 who's been their best player for a little bit didn't exactly do anything special Bustio had a phenomenal series and like he played great absolutely and want to give him so much credit but the idea that they won this series and Demon 1 didn't even have to do that much is a very good sign for EG in the way that things can go for them right 2-0 in the series the 13-5 here on split followed up by the 14-12 in the end in the overtime Bustio 35 frags over over this map. I mean, absurd to do that in one map of play. And Demon 1 sitting there, 15 and 18, not really any crazy first blood numbers, and um, still just delivering the goods. So, yeah, Bustio, 46 kills over the series, plus 16. Pretty much all of that damage was done, of course, on Lotus. What a map. Almost wasn't quite enough to win it anyway, right? Because they, you know, they could have lost this one. They had to clutch up a little bit on the, the end of that rounds, just to force overtime, and they won five in a row there. So, very impressive. The next series, and we'll discuss what happens and the groups that look like in a second, was DRX versus the attacking Soul Esports guys. This was a lovely clutch here from Buzz as well. This 1v3, the second shot was fantastic. And then after that, it was just a matter of closing things out. But I mean, yeah, are you not entertained? That was absolutely fantastic from Buzz. And we know that DRX are coming in as one of the top dogs to potentially win the entire tournament. They've been a team that always seems to make it kind of deep and then often fall short when it really matters. But a 2 0 versus ASC, good result. Not exactly, um, you know, a demolition job, right? Fracture was 30. 13-10, Pearl was 13-7, but comfortable enough for DRX, and uh, that gets them through the first round in their group, and that makes the groups look like this. Now, we'll go onto this Edward Gaming T1 series in just a second, because that is ongoing as of recording, but yeah, DRX 2-0, for eSports go down 2-0, that leaves EG DRX in the winner's side. The winner of that series that goes on tomorrow, they will qualify officially through Group B. So that's, um, you know, of course, elimination side, for eSports versus attacking Soul eSports, which goes on in in a couple of days.
days. Now, Group A, though, is looking like this. NRG Navi goes on tomorrow morning, but Edward Gaming T1 is currently underway, and let's see how things are going if I just hit the refresh. T1, they took down Game 1, so, um, and actually, Edward Gaming are on the verge here as a recording, at least. This, probably, the series is over by the time that this video goes live, but it was 13-10 on Fracture, and it's currently 12-7. I guess we can actually briefly tune in here if we really want to, to uh, what's happening at the moment. But this is a highly competitive group, right? Like, T1 versus uh, EDG here is a big series, but you would still think that Na'Vi and NRG are the two teams that are most favoured to get through, and they've just had a 5v3 advantage here, so I'm guessing EDG are about to close it out. If they joke it now, it would be pretty tragic. So if you're very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.